This episode is brought to you by A3, a CMMC cloud-based collaborative environment for an organization seeking certification, otherwise known as an OSC, to build CMMC packages and share with a marketplace of consultant RPOs and assessor C3PAOs. Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of 123 CMMC. My name is Dana Mantilla, I am your host, and today our lovely guest is David Bedard and he is with KTL Solutions. So welcome, David, and why don't you take a minute to tell us a little bit about you and a little bit about your company. Thank you, Dana. Thank you for having me on today. A um, little bit about KTL Solutions. You know, we're a Microsoft Gold partner across numerous domains. You know, we really are there to assist our clients with everything from licensing, services, dynamics, consulting, and more importantly nowadays, uh, CMMC, NIST 800-171 Consulting, and more. Uh, we were one of the first partners selected for the Agreement for Online Services for Government, or AOSG, back in 2017. So we, there isn't much that we haven't seen in GCC High nowadays. And uh, we were also one of the first uh, CMMC registered provider organizations listed on the marketplace. Uh, myself, I have 15 years experience in sales consulting, you know, really around cybersecurity. Uh, worked across various frameworks and standards, everything from ISO 27001 and 2, um, NIST 853, PCI DSS, and of course, High Trust. Um, but really at KTL, I, I kind of serve as that CMMC registered practitioner for that pre-sales process and you know, prior to handing it off to the team, as well as the senior account manager for aerospace and defense. So I really provide that guidance to our customers across various frameworks and regulations, you know, most importantly, DFARS, NIST 800-171 and CMMC. All right, wow. There's a lot going on there. So today <laughs> we're going to talk about the CMMC process and we're going to start with specifically if you could explain to us maybe something about one of the journeys for one of your clients and how that kind of went. Sure. Uh, you know, Dana, that's a really good question. It really comes down to understanding the boundary. You know, where does the CUI reside? Um, how do I go about putting the checks and balances in place to make it so there's no seepage out of the environment? Um, you know, being a Microsoft Gold partner, uh, you know, as far as an AOSG partner, we have access to tools and resources under the CMMC Acceleration Program through Microsoft. And really from there, it's, it's having that infrastructure design session, uh, that pre-sales discussion to really understand the scope of the environment. Uh, in, in the case of one of our clients, they wanted to have a secure enclave. They didn't want to have anything on those endpoints. So it was several design discussions, bringing in uh, you know, technical resources to kind of discuss, okay, well, you can do this, but you can't do this. Is that gonna be an issue? Um, and then through those discussions, we were able to develop a, a secure configuration in order to make the design sessions into reality. Basically came up with the virtual desktop infrastructure hosted in Azure government. And we pretty much, we call it a, a secure enclave. Okay, so that's very interesting. So can you describe a little bit more what a secure enclave means in layman's terms to somebody who may not have ever heard that before? Yeah, really. I mean, it's you got to think of it this way. Microsoft has Azure government and GCC high. So it's really like looking at it as an industrial fish tank, you know, industrial strength fish tank. It's built to a certain specification and requirement, and it's meant to house your precious exotic fish, or in this case, CUI, mm -hmm. or ITAR data, uh, export controlling though in this instance. Sure, the, the, the tank itself is very secure on its own, but that still leaves the issue of who can see the fish? That's really the big issue. The answer is until you do something and make the configurations and the security changes and know what you have to put in place, really anybody can have access to that room. You know, so now it really becomes a, a question of how do I kind of block people from having access to this room where I have my fish tank with my precious exotic fish and make sure that I can still see them. Um, you know, because basically you start out with four doors and I mean, four walls and no door uh, and a security camera. So that way you can actually see into that room um, and put the proper authentications in place so you can view it anywhere. 
or maybe you just slap a door in place and put the security controls on that door that only authorized individuals are able to enter that door. So it really becomes a matter of, okay, do I want to use a geolocation uh, authentication or do I want to make sure that I'm VPN in in a certain way to, you know, and these are determinations that are discussed during the, the initial process of design. And depending on how your organization choose to operate, I mean, you would either be physically at that location as long as you have the proper authentication to enter it. I love that. I love the fish tank analogy. That's people can relate to that. They can understand, oh, my beautiful fish tank with all these beautiful fish. And you're thinking, okay, there's your CUI and all your important stuff that you have to keep an eye on. So I love the fish tank analogy. That's good. <laughs> all right. So can you describe in simple terms what that environment would look like? I think we just kind of touched a little bit with the four walls, but if you can go in a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really, the environment is meant to be set up in a way that only authorized individuals can get access to this environment. So it's, it's like that, that bubble around that entire room. Um, you know, when you start having to poke holes in that bubble, then you, you start having some additional security risks. So it really comes down to understanding as an organization, how much risk do you want to take on and how much more policy and procedure do you want to have to write in order to comply with the CMMC and the state 171 requirements. So in this case with the secure enclave, it, it, it's very locked down to the point that you have to go in into a virtual desktop infrastructure through, you know, either Windows virtual desktop, uh, VPN into or virtual private network into the system in order to have access to it. So no information can come out of that, you know, that location. Uh, you can't even access it with your mobile phone, um, you know, because we don't want to bring the mobile phones into scope because that brings endpoints into scope. And then you start having physical security requirements of CMMC. You know, that's actually going to probably be an excellent, excellent solution that the, the virtual desktop that you were talking about for some of these smaller, maybe subprimes that um, they don't have the budget to get all the certification, but so you can allow them somewhere where they would be able to view, you know, the, the CUI or, but they can't take it anywhere. Like you just mentioned, there's no physical risk of anything being, uh, you know, physically removed. So maybe somebody's going to develop something like that for some of these smaller um companies. I don't know. I just thought about that as you were saying that, but yeah, I mean, it's really, you know, as far as candidates for the secure enclave, I mean, that, that's pretty much it. You, you hit the nail on the head there. Um, it's really meant for these organizations that are kind of service oriented, um, not doing anything as, as far as, you know, they it will work for like a manufacturer, but they're going to have to bring some on-premise uh, in scope because, you know, they may have to print things. So, okay, now we have to have a dedicated printer. Now we have to secure that printer uh, in a secure room. But I mean, the concept around the secure enclave for the most part somewhat applies, but you start, you know, the secure enclave is kind of that, that starting base for some folks, uh, but it's really service consulting services, um, design services that don't use heavy CAD uh, mm -hmm. as far as, you know, uh, as far as computer author, uh, automated design, uh, mm -hmm. software, you know, th that are resource intensive. Mm -hmm. Those are the types of organizations that would probably make the most sense for. Mm. Okay. Well, that, that I, that's definitely making sense for what I was just mentioning that. So can you use your phone to check your email? Yeah, as, as we kind of discussed a little bit earlier, um, you start poking holes into that secure environment or into that room by having handheld devices, you know, and that's really what the phone or mobile tablet or anything else is that you install Outlook uh, on that device. You're basically bringing your app information outside of that secure enclave. So you're, you're poking holes in. Now at that point, by poking holes in, you're also introducing that endpoint into scope from your physical security and device management and encryption and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Um, so you're adding it, adding a lot more issues by having it on there. Now you have to add it to the device inventory. You have to, like you just mentioned, put it in the scope too. So yeah, uh, 
just by just by what, being able to check your email. So, okay. So what about the environment in this case makes it so secure? And I think you might have just touched on this, meaning because mm -hmm. if you can't remove anything you, and you have to go through it to, in a very secure manner to get there. But is there anything else that's making it so secure? Oh, most definitely, Dana. I mean, you know, really Microsoft and working with the Department of Defense, uh, DOD, you know, created Azure government and Microsoft 365 DOD. Um, Richard Wakeman over at Microsoft has a great blog post, kind of goes into the differences between the various cloud offerings. Uh, pretty much all the data centers are located here in the United States. They're operated and run by screened U.S. personnel. You know, and it's, it's kind of like looking at buying a house. I mean, you wouldn't want to buy a new house that was built by an unlicensed contractor that, with shoddy materials and possibly operated by an homeowners association that's out of the country, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> that, that would pretty much be a, a disaster or a rep, you know, recipe for disaster. Yeah. So, you know, Microsoft, they, they built it to the DOD specs, you know, created Azure government for the DOD. And, you know, on top of that, and created the government community cloud high for the Department of Defense, um, which is residing on that same Azure government for directory and network services. The, the really the end goal is for the DOD and the DIB to be in the same room so they can party like it's 1999. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I had to throw the Prince reference in there. <laughs> All right, so we've heard a little bit about the secure enclave. Is this the only way that we can comply with CMMC? No, definitely not. It's not a one size fits all uh, solution, Dana. I mean. It, there, there's numerous, numerous solutions that can align and meet the CMMC requirements. Um, this is just one that we know has been vetted, uh, especially by the, you know, DIBCAC from the CMMC assessments. Um, it really begins from starting to understand your business. I mean, uh, what are your boundaries? What systems need to be in scope? I mean, you know, like I mentioned earlier, you, you might be a manufacturer and you might have to print to the floor, or might, you might need to feed information into the systems. Um, you know, you might have to have the need to, to run a resource intensive CAD program. Um, so there's various reasons and it's really becomes uh, having to understand and know um, what's in scope first, you know, and really, you know, what's your inventory like? Mm -hmm. There was somebody that was talking to me the other day about, you know, sometimes people want to just jump right in, let's do a gap assessment. And I know her point was that, well, wait a minute here, before we even do that, we have to do scope to see what is what is even involved with these contracts? Where is the CUI? We, you know, where is this as opposed to the whole organization? And it, it makes it a little bit more manageable then too, when you do that, because if you can look and say, okay, well, these contracts are what we need to look at. Mm -hmm. These don't. So now we can get rid of these and just focus on these. But what, like what you said about knowing your business, this is something exactly like that. You have to know where are the physical boundaries? Do you have a device inventory? Do you, what are we doing here? And a lot of the companies, they really are not doing very much. So we're starting at a very, very low point. And even just some of the most basic, basic cybersecurity prevention tips, tools, whatever that we could put in place. If we put all those in the most basic ones across the country, we would be in a much better place than we are even, even today. So Oh, um, most definitely. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great way. Start with knowing your business and looking at all that stuff you just rattled off. So that's a very, very, very good, good point. So do we have anything that we'd like to throw out there for the audience before we go? Yeah, I mean, and to be frank, I mean, I, I've seen a lot of folks that are just, I, I don't know, they're, they're waiting for the DOD to come down and, and say something definitive about CMMC. Um, just keep in mind, I mean, don't be the deer in the headlights or, or that stubborn mule. I mean, you, you've got to be able to, to start doing things because you still have NIST 800-171 that's been around for a while. I mean, you still need to submit to your supplier performance risk system or the SPURS to, to win or bid on any new contracts. I mean, the, you know, the, the, the DOD's uh, PMs, I mean, they're going to be looking to see if you have a score. Uh, I mean, they haven't said anything definitively about, okay, you need a high score, but you will be needing that score. And, and eventually CMMC is going to be out there on all contracts. I mean, granted, it, it, it's a long ways off, but, you know, why, why stop? I mean, if you're going to look at things, I mean, maybe it's time for you to grab that book, you know, Who Moved My Cheese? And, you know, think to yourself, am I going to be a, a, a sniff and scurry or yeah. a hem and haw? 
Yes. <laughs> this is a great place for everybody to take a look and, and start because this book right here, it sums up exactly what we're talking about and how this is not going away. Whether you want to call it CMMC or you just want to call it general cybersecurity, it's not going away. And this is one of our new responsibilities that we as Americans, as company owners, as business owners, whatever, we need to start taking this seriously. And in this book, there's a few characters that they don't and not good things happen to them. And then there's some other ones that they realize, OK, we got to get we got to get with this and they hop to it and off they go and they start to go look for they look for the cheese, which that's the issue in this book. But anyway, get exactly. this book and you could start. I was so happy when I saw that you mentioned it in your notes. I was like, wait, I think I have that book here. I'm going to show it on the screen. Oh, anyway. Well, David, thank you very, very much for all of your time. I really appreciate this. And thank you, everybody, for listening. And wherever you are on your CMMC journey, we wish you the best of luck. Thank so. you very much, Dana. It was a pleasure being on. Thanks for coming. Goodbye, everybody. Take care. Bye. This episode of 123 CMMC has been brought to you by A3, an assessment accreditation application developed by CyberDI. A3 is a CMMC cloud-based collaborative environment for an organization seeking certification, OSC, to build CMMC packages and share with a marketplace of consultant, RPOs, and assessor C3PAOs.